How do you read a work of art? When a piece of street art catches your eye, or you find yourself walking slowly through the rooms of an art museum. You may not necessarily feel the need to read a work of art. Art moves us, and we respond emotionally to the beautiful, disturbing, and mysterious sights around us. A portrait of a mother and a child, such as Mary Cassatt's painting. The bath, might cause you to reflect on your own familial relationships. Or, you may find yourself curiously transfixed by the sheer enormity of Clay's Oldenburg and Kusch van Bruggen's 5,500 pound shuttlecock. Perched precariously in the garden of the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art in Kansas City, Missouri. Sometimes, however, we want to dig deeper and investigate the meaning of art. What were the dominant styles of architecture in the Spanish New World? In Spanish Latin American, Baroque styles of architecture remained. Popular long after it had fallen out of fashion in Europe. Throughout the 18th century, Magnificent examples of Baroque architecture continued to be built in countries such as Mexico, Peru, Ecuador, and even further afield in the Philippines. The Church of St. Sebastian and Santa Prisco, in Toscata Alarcon, Mexico, is a good example of an 18th century Baroque church heavily. Decorated in stucco sculpture in a popular style known as the Churigaresque. Near Tucson, Arizona, the Mission San Xavier del BAC was also built in the 18th century and reflected Spanish Baroque styles. The nearly 100 foot long church was built using brick and mortar. Rather than adobe, which was commonly used by the native people of Arizona. What is Beadoin? Beadoin is a Buddhist temple originally built during the Heian period in a mountainous region near Kyoto. Considered one of the most beautiful Pure Land Buddhist temples. Biadoin is also known as Phoenix Hall because of two bronze phoenixes on the roof. And because the building's upswept rooflines are considered bird-like. It sits in front of a reflecting pond designed in the shape of the Sanskrit letter A. Which is the sacred symbol of the Amida Buddha. Who is Shireen Neshet? Shireen Neshet, 1957, is an Iranian-American photographer and video artist whose photographs frequently explore stereotypes of Muslim women. Her later video work, including Tuba, 2002, and Logic of the Birds. 2002, explores spiritual themes through Quranic symbolism and music. What is Viking art?
The term Viking art or Norse art refers to the art produced by the peoples of Scandinavia. Which includes modern day Sweden, Norway, and Denmark. Much like Anglo Saxon and Hiberno Saxon art, Viking art featured the animal style. Early medieval Scandinavians also practiced memorial ship burials in which important people were buried at sea with their valuable earthly goods. The burial ship from Osberg, Norway, c. 834, was over 75 feet long, and contained the interred bodies of two women. As well the skeletons of around 10 horses. The front and back of the ship, the prow and stern, were formed into large spirals and the ship itself is covered in intricate animal carvings, including dragons, which were popular motifs in Viking art. What is a painted screen? In Japan, painted folding screens, called biobu, were popular in the imperial houses of the elite military rulers of the Momoyama period. While many of these castles and houses no longer exist, 17th century screens made by the Kano family remain. Compared to Western standards, 17th century Japanese houses were very empty. With no furniture or decorative trinkets filling interior spaces. Instead, movable screens were painted in bold colors. Often depicting nature, landscapes, and genre scenes. Painted screens by the Kano family include Cypress Tree. An eight-fold work attributed to Kano Itoku, 1543-1590, which was originally used as a sliding door. The artist emphasized the texture of the bark of the tree while simplifying the background, which serves to monumentalize the tree and evoke the vastness of nature. What are the plastered skulls of Jericho? The people of Neolithic Jericho buried their dead under the floors of their houses in a practice interpreted as a form of ancestor worship. While complete bodies were often buried. Sometimes the head was removed and carefully reconstructed using colored plaster. Red and black paint was used to mimic facial features and shells. Such as cowries, were used to create white eyes. The result was a lifelike representation of the deceased and the practice has been considered by some scholars to be one of the earliest examples of portrait making. Similar examples of plastered skulls have been found at other sites across the Near East. What is the Great Serpent Mound? The Great Serpent Mound is a curvilinear burial mound in the shape of a curling snake located in the southern portion of Ohio. This monumental earthwork is nearly a quarter of a mile long and is still clearly visible. 
The Great Serpent Mound was at first attributed to the Adena culture, which flourished in the early woodland period. C 300 B. C. E 1000 CE, and was known for building monumental mounds used for burial. The site is now thought to be the work of the slightly later Mississippian culture and has been dated to around 1070 CE. Serpentine forms appear on other types of Mississippian art and serpents, as in many other cultures were associated with fertility and harvest. Some scholars, however, believe that the shape of the Great Serpent Mound mirrors the path of Halley's Comet, which was visible in the year 1066. The Bayou Tapestry also records this event. What is Chan Buddhism? Chan Buddhism, known in Japan as Zen Buddhism, is a school of Mahayana Buddhism that developed in China in the 6th century and gained importance during the Song dynasties. Chan Buddhist philosophy emphasizes the direct experience of the individual and enlightenment through meditation. While some Chan Buddhists believe enlightenment through meditation takes a lifetime to achieve, others believe enlightenment can be achieved suddenly, in a flash of understanding. Chan Buddhism had a large impact on Chinese painting. The 13th century painter Liang Kai's simple, yet expressive, hanging scroll. 6th Chan Patriarch Chopping Bamboo, depicts a crouching patriarch who suddenly achieves enlightenment after hearing the sound of his blade striking bamboo wood. What was Katalhuyuk? Katalhuyuk was a sophisticated, urban-like Neolithic settlement that developed about 1,000 years after Jericho in present-day Turkey. The densely clustered houses of Katalhuyuk were made of timber and mud brick. The village had no streets and the houses had no doors the villagers entered their homes through the roof. Many apparent religious shrines have been found at Kittalhuyuk. Though nothing is known of specific religious beliefs practiced by the inhabitants here. Naturalistic figures made of clay and stone have been found at the site including representations of animals such as goats, cattle, and boars that appear to have been ritualistically stabbed in a manner that suggests hunting rites. Stylized female figures have also been discovered with pointed legs and angular faces. Along with larger figurines that scholars associate with a commonly revered great mother deity. Kittalhuyuk is also notable for its paintings, including a wall painting of the town itself. With Hassan Dag, a nearby twin coned volcano shown hovering just beyond the village limits. This wall painting is among the earliest paintings ever done on a man made surface. Who were some of the leading early photographers? Nader, 1820 to 1910 Nader, or Gaspard Felix Turnacon, 
was an ambitious French photographer known for portraits and aerial photographs of Paris, and is credited with championing photography as a form of fine art. Julia Margaret Cameron, 1815-1879 Cameron didn't start taking photographs until she was nearly 50 years old. Her portraits featured a soft, diffused light that captured the essence of her subjects. Her goal was to ennoble photography and to secure for it the character and uses of high art by combining the real and ideal and sacrificing nothing of the truth by all possible devotion to poetry and beauty. As quoted in Julia Margaret Cameron Getty Museum Oscar Ridgelander, 1813-1875 Ridgelander was a Swedish artist who first used photography to aid in his painting. He innovated techniques in photomontage and combination printing. And was interested in both portraiture and allegorical scenes. Matthew Brady, 1823-1896 He was the leading American portrait photographer and journalist whose many Famous images include portraits of President Abraham Lincoln and Confederate General Robert E. Lee. Brady organized a corps of photographers, including Timothy O'Sullivan, who documented the horrors of the Civil War. Jacob A. Rees, 1849-1914 Rees was a Danish-American activist and photographer who documented the plight of the poor in New York City in photographs such as Home of the Italian Rag Picker. Jersey Street, c. 1888-1889. He is known as an innovator with his use of the magnesium flash. Edward Mybridge, 1830-1904 Mybridge was an English-born photographer who worked primarily in America and developed an advanced shutter mechanism for the camera that allowed for high-speed photography that could create moving pictures. Likely inspiring Thomas Edison in his development of the Cine camera. His galloping horse, 1878, captured 12 shots of a running race horse that changed the way artists depicted such an action. What is the Aztec calendar stone? Like the Mayans, the Aztec were deeply interested in calendars, which were linked to concepts of creation. The Aztec calendar stone, C1502-1520, is large over 11 feet in diameter and over 25 tons. Also called the sunstone, the carved stone emphasizes the Aztec concept of cyclical time and reflects the Aztec's cosmology and mythology. At the center of the stone is an image of the creature Alan, its tongue in the shape of a knife. Also depicted on the stone are the first four suns and the bodies of two fire gods according to Aztec tradition. The monumental carving is not exactly a marker of time. Though there are markings that indicate the 20-day Aztec calendar, and the date of the birth of the current, fifth, sun. The stone was excavated in the center of Mexico City which now lies at the heart of the former Aztec Empire, the city of Teotihuacan. Teotihuacan was considered the birthplace of the fifth and current sun, and was the political center of the empire. 
although the meaning of the Aztec calendar stone remains mysterious. Its image continues to influence modern Mexican art and culture. Did samurai culture influence Japanese art? As samurai culture grew stronger during the Kamakura period, 1185 to 1392, it did indeed have an influence on the arts, including sculpture and painting. One of the most powerful hand scroll paintings from the 13th century is Night Attack on the Sanjo Palace, which depicts swirling flames in deep orange hues as armored. Warriors on horseback attack one another in a battle between the Minamoto and Terra clans. The surprise attack was a significant historical event in Japan's military history. And though the hand scroll was painted nearly 100 years after the battle took place, it serves as a historical record of the period. What are Mistec mosaics? The indigenous Mistec people of Mexico and Central America were well known for their skills in pottery, metalworking, and mosaics. They used the mosaic technique to make brightly colored masks and used materials such as turquoise and pearl oyster shells to create colorful, luminescent pieces. The skull of the smoking mirror is a 16th century. Mistec mosaic mask that depicts the powerful god Tezcatlipoca. The mask itself is supported by a real human skull with the back. Removed and deer skin straps attached enabling the mask to be worn. The eyes of the mask are made with reflective iron pyrite and white shells. While the face is decorated in white, black, and turquoise stripes. As the materials needed to create this mask, such as turquoise, and black lignite, were difficult to source. It is clear that this was a highly valued object requiring time and effort to create. It also important to note that this mask was meant to be worn and had an important ritual function. The mask is now part of the collection at the British Museum. Who was Peter Paul Rubens? Peter Paul Rubens, 1577-1640, was a Flemish painter whose work is characterized by a rich painterly style and a lively, expressive tone. His paintings are often monumental in size, include deep red colors, a favorite of Rubens, and were sought after by both aristocratic and Catholic patrons. He painted mythological, genre, and Christian subjects. Rubens worked for patrons such as King Charles I of England, the Habsburgs, and the Spanish royal family. Rubens traveled across Europe studying earlier masters and even contemporaries such as Caravaggio. He was highly successful and was able to build his own grand home and studio in Antwerp. Rubens was a prolific painter, some of his most famous paintings include The Raising of the Cross, c. 
1610, which is a 15-foot-tall triptych in the church of St. Walpurga in Antwerp. As well as Venus and Adonis, c. 1635, and the recently attributed Massacre of the Innocents, c. 1611, which sold for over $70 million at auction in 2002. What is Buddhism? Buddhism developed in India during the Mauryan period, 322 to 185 B. C. and became the official religion of Emperor Ashoka, who ruled between 273 and 232 BCE. Buddhism is founded upon the teachings of Buddha, the Enlightened One. Buddha was born Siddhartha Gautama a wealthy prince. It was foretold that Siddhartha would become either a great military leader or a fully awakened being. After he reached enlightenment, the Buddha held his first teachings in which he explained the Four Noble Truths. The Noble Truths make up the foundation of Buddhist philosophy. They are as follows, life is dukkha, translated as suffering, stress, or dissatisfaction. The cause of dukkha is tanha, translated as craving or clinging. Dukkha can be extinguished. The way to extinguish dukkha is by following the Eightfold Path in the Buddhist tradition. The Eightfold Path is a set of principles for achieving nirvana. A state in which one escapes from the recurring cycle of death and rebirth and is free from dukkha. The Buddha's teaching is often symbolized as a wheel, known as the wheel of law. What is the significance of ball playing in Mesoamerica? Ball games were popular throughout Mesoamerica. An art depicting ball games exists in many Mesoamerican cultures including the Olmec, Maya, and Aztec. Archaeologists have even discovered the ruins of sunken Olmec ball courts. Not much is known about the specific rules of the game. Mayan art depicts ball players wearing protective padding. And other art shows players wearing helmets and even leather belts. It is important to note that the game wasn't just for fun it had. A serious religious significance for those who played and watched. It is possible that some ball players were forced to participate against their will and that human sacrifice played a role in the game. According to Mayan mythology, ball games were symbolic of the cycle of life, death, and regeneration. Who was Robert Rauschenberg? Robert Rauschenberg, 1925-2008, along with Jasper Johns, his close friend, occasional lover, and business partner, was one of the most influential artists in pop art. And he is credited with leading art away from abstract expressionism. 
he is particularly famous for erasing a de Kooning drawing and then framing the empty page in a work he called Erased de Kooning Drawing, 1953. Would they be strong enough to support such a heavy structure? In the year 558 C. E. There was an answer, the dome collapsed, not because of the windows. But due to weakness in the supporting pairs. A reconfigured dome was constructed in its place, steeper and therefore even higher than the original. This new dome, along with extra supports, has survived ever since. Nearly 1000 years after its construction, the Hagia Sophia was converted to a mosque after the Ottomans took over Constantinople in 1453. How did Romans make their mosaics? Mosaics were very popular in ancient Rome and, like realistic wall paintings, were used extensively to decorate the floors of private homes and villas of the wealthy. At the heart of a Roman mosaic are tessery, small pieces of glass and stone, often in a cube shape. The tessery were pressed into cement, which was also used as a sort of grout in the spaces between the stones. Mosaic panels, called emblemata, were usually built off-site by the mosaic artist and then installed into a floor. Romans liked to copy famous paintings in mosaic form, which required very tiny pebbles in order to achieve the detail of a painting. A number of lost Greek paintings still exist in a Roman mosaic form. What is Cufic? Named after the town of Kufa in Iraq, Kufic is an early form of Arabic script that evolved from a style of inscription used for coins and stone monuments. The Kufic script features large letters as early Qur'ans were often shared by multiple readers and are characterized by long horizontal lines and thick rounded curves. Kufic was the style of calligraphy used most often until the 12th century. What was revolutionary about the Last Supper? Completed between 1495 to 1498 in the refectory of Santa Maria del Grazie in Milan. The Last Supper is considered by some to be Leonardo da Vinci's greatest work, sorry, Mona Lisa. It is a fresco, which means it was painted on a freshly plastered wall. And it depicts the biblical scene in which Jesus Christ breaks bread with his followers on the evening before his death. It was considered revolutionary for a number of reasons, including its naturalism. Da Vinci chose to depict the moment when Christ declares that one of them will betray him. The apostles gathered around the table with Jesus are shocked. Saint John cannot bear it and 
simply faints at hearing the news. Saint Peter is angered, and pulls out his knife. Foreshadowing his use of the weapon when Jesus is betrayed by Judas in a later part of the biblical narrative. For the first time in art history, Judas is shown on the same side of the table as Christ. Though he leans away, betraying his guilt to the viewer. Like other works of Renaissance art, the story is clearly visually articulated. The apostles are organized into four groups of three, and are all aligned on one side of the table. There are three windows behind the table, and three dark niches along each side. Three being associated with the Holy Trinity. Despite the shock of the news, the painting is calm and the mood is thoughtful. Da Vinci's Last Supper was a major influence on other artists who painted the same scene. Including Tintoretto, Hans Holbein, and Rubens. Who were the eight? The Eight was a group of American realist artists with diverse styles Robert Henry, 1865-1929, Arthur B. Davies, 1863-1928, William Glackens, 1870-1938, Ernest Lawson, 1873-1939, George Lux, 1867-1933. Maurice Prendergast, 1858-1924, Everett Shin, 1876-1953, and John Sloan. 1871-1951, all of whom were rejected by the National Academy for a spring exhibition in 1907. In response, they had their own show at the Macbeth Gallery in New York City in 1908. Many of these artists went on to be known as members of the Ashkent School, a group who made gritty, realistic paintings of urban life. Their one and only show as the eight received mixed reviews. With some critics feeling that the underbelly urban life was not appropriate subject matter for art but it went on to make a major impact on American realism in the 20th century. Though some use the terms the Eight and Askin School interchangeably, they are not exactly the same. What is Twisted Perspective? Many of the animals depicted in the Lascaux Caves, both predators and prey, are shown in profile. Which means the viewer is looking at the side of the animal and only one half of the face can be seen. Some animals have been manipulated, however. Using a fairly sophisticated technique called twisted perspective. Twisted perspective is created by showing most of the animal's body in profile. But turning a portion of the animal's head so that it seems to point directly at the viewer. This technique adds drama and energy to the image and results in a lifelike depiction of an animal. In one example, an antlered deer is shown mostly in profile but its antlers appear to swing powerfully towards the viewer. Who is Amitabha Buddha?
Amitbha Buddha was a mortal king who reached an enlightened state and became a Buddha. In the tradition of Pure Land Buddhism, the most popular form of Buddhism in China. Known as the Buddha of Infinite Life and Infinite Light as well as Buddha of the West. Amitbha Buddha promises rebirth in Paradise, or Western Pure Land, for those with faith. What was the Ashkan school? The Ashken School was a loosely affiliated group of American realist artists made up of some members of the eight. Including Robert Henry, William Glackens, George Lux, Everett Shin, and John Sloan. The painter George Bellows, 1882-1925, is also associated with the Ashken School. Like the Impressionists, the artists of the Askin school were interested in scenes of everyday American life. Though they tended towards darker themes. Paintings such as John Sloan's Election Night, 1907, and George Bellows' Cliff Dwellers, 1913. Feature bold colors and seemingly spontaneous energy as large groups of people fill the frame. The Ashken School is considered the first modern American art movement. Why was Joseph Albers interested in the square? Joseph Albers, 1888-1976, was a progressive German artist who taught at the Bauhaus and went on to become one of the most influential art teachers in the United States. He held posts at the influential Black Mountain College in North Carolina and at Yale University, where he taught color theory and abstraction and experimented with visual perception and illusion. Albers is known for his series of prints and paintings titled Homage to the Square, in which he placed a square within a square using various colors, creating a dynamic and often ambiguous sense of depth, geometry, and color contrast for such apparently simple paintings. Albers was able to use the square to experiment with color theory and depth perception in a profound way. What is Mozan art? Mozan art is a Romanesque style of art greatly influenced by classical sources and associated with the Meuse Valley region, which reaches from France to the Netherlands along the path of the Meuse River. The terms encompasses architecture, painting, and sculpture. Though 12th century Meuse Valley sculptors are particularly known for their mastery of metalworking. Mozan art is considered less abstract than the Romanesque art of other regions. Featuring realistic anatomy and proportions, as opposed to the elongated figures of Jusli Bertuz. What is Pacific art? Pacific art covers the art of cultures in Oceania, Polynesia, Melanesia, and Micronesia. This includes countries such as Australia, New Zealand, and Papua New Guinea. 
and territories such as Easter Island, Samoa, Fiji, Tonga, and the U.S. state of Hawaii. The art of these regions is sometimes referred to as oceanic art. Pacific art forms and subject matter can vary greatly from culture to culture and can include paintings. Ritual masks, wood and stone carvings, domestic and monumental architecture, textiles, and body art. Who were the Etruscans? The Etruscan civilization flourished in Italy for nearly 500 years. Until the Etruscans were conquered by the Romans in 509 B.C. They controlled a fertile region known as Etruria, now called Tuscany. The art and culture of the ancient Etruscans were certainly influenced by the ancient Greeks. In fact, the Etruscans adopted a number of Greek gods into their pantheon. But, they also maintained a unique tradition of their own. And went on to influence the ancient Romans who absorbed their culture. What is a Navajo sand painting? Sand painting is an essential part of traditional healing ceremonies for the Native American. Navajo people of the American Southwest. Using natural materials such as colorful powdered stones, pigments, and even corn pollen, Navajo medicine men ritualistically recreate. The mythological journeys of gods and heroes to form complex images with healing powers. Najavo sand paintings, also called dry paintings, are often composed of highly stylized. Repetitive geometric forms such as curved and angled lines. Completed paintings are never publicly shared and they are destroyed once the ceremony is over. Though some sand painting imagery has been published and photographs are owned by the Library of Congress and other institutions. Strict adherence to ritual tradition is necessarily in order for the healing ceremony to be successful. The American abstract expressionist artist, Jackson Pollock, was inspired by the process of creating the sand painting, which is laid flat on the ground while the artist stands over it a process Pollock used when making his own art. What is the difference between oil paint and tempera paint? Oil paints are made by mixing pigment into oil, often linseed or another vegetable-based oil. Oil paints create beautiful rich colors that can be easily blended because oil paints dry very slowly. During the late Renaissance, oil painting techniques were developed in the Netherlands and interest in oil painting spread slowly throughout the rest of Europe. In Renaissance Italy, especially Tuscany, tempera paints were preferred over oil and had been in use long before oil paints. Tempera paint is made by mixing pigment with egg yolk. It dries much more slowly than oil paint. Like oil paints, tempera paints create lovely rich colors.
What is a miniature painting? Particularly popular in Persian, Ottoman, and Mughal traditions, miniature paintings are small works on paper. Whether book illustrations or separate paintings kept in albums, known as a muraksa. Miniature paintings were not framed and not displayed on walls, but were meant to be held in one's hands. Miniature painting required years of training and apprenticeship to create. One of the most important centers of miniature painting was the Royal Herat School in Afghanistan. Where students were instructed on painting and calligraphy. During the early 16th century, the school was moved to Tabriz, Iran. Miniature painters sat on the ground with one knee bent to support the painting board. Multiple layers of colors derived from pigments were applied, including gold, and then the painting was burnished. Who was Paul Gauguin? One of the most famous of the French post-impressionists, Paul Gauguin. 1848-1903, struggled to find critical success during his lifetime but is now considered to be an innovator who made a major impact on early 20th century modern art. He was primarily a painter, but also worked in sculpture, ceramics, printmaking, and writing. Gauguin identified with the 19th century symbolist movement. And his bold, flatly colored paintings often hold significant symbolic meaning. In 1891, he expressed a desire to shed the corrupting influence of modern civilization and fled to Tahiti where he spent the majority of the rest of his life living in poverty and working on paintings infused with symbolism, mythology, and Tahitian subject matter, in what is considered a precursor of primitivism. Even before leaving for French Polynesia, Gauguin's work shows evidence of inspiration from folk art. His painting The Yellow Christ, 1889, depicts the crucifixion in Brittany, in northern France. Local women encircle Christ, kneeling in prayer. The bold, flat colors of the painting are reminiscent of medieval. Christian painting and emphasize the power and intangibility of prayer. Later works include Tea No Arios, The Seed of the Arioi, 1892. Two Tahitian Women, 1899, and Nevermore, 1897, a painting that mixes the influence of Edgar Allan Poe the traditional female nude, and Tahitian imagery. Who was Jan Van Eyck? Jan Van Eyck, D. 1441, was one of the most significant painters of the 15th century. He worked in Burgundy and is most well known for the Ghent altarpiece. A monumental work of tremendous realism and detail. Jan van Eyck came from a family of artists and was known to have worked alongside his brother, Hubert. 
the Van Eyck brothers likely worked together on the Ghent altar piece. Philip the Good, the Duke of Burgundy, was one of their most significant patrons. Some of Van Eyck's most important paintings include Portrait of a Man in a Turban. 1433, which might be a self-portrait, and the Arnolfini portrait, 1434. What was the iconoclastic controversy? During the early history of the Christian Church, there was a debate about whether or not it was appropriate to make representational images in religious art. The term iconoclasm means image breaking and iconoclasts believed that representational imagery should be forbidden. At the heart of the debate was the relationship between a painted image and the figure being depicted. There was fear of idolatry and a fear that beauty could distract the viewer from the religious sanctity of the figure. It is possible the rise of Islam, and the iconoclastic views of that religion influenced the Byzantines during the iconoclastic controversy. What was Cobra? Cobra was an international group of artists whose name was derived from the home cities of its founding members, Copenhagen, Brussels, and Amsterdam. The group was founded by Danish painter Esther Jorn, 1914-1973, and poet Christian Dutremont, 1922-1979, in a Paris café in 1948. The group lasted until 1951. They rejected surrealism. And like other artistic movements after World War II, were interested in starting fresh and developing a new art for the post war age. For Cobra, this meant emphasizing spontaneous creativity and artistic experimentation. Many of the works by group members, which also included Carol Appel, 1921 to 2006. George Constant, 1920-2005, and Corne, 1922-2010, were bold, expressive, and steeped in fantasy. In Jorn's painting in the beginning was the image, 1965-1966. Primary colors dominate and appear smeared across the canvas while Constant's fantastic animals. 1947, evokes primal instincts through childlike depictions of wild beasts. Cobra members also valued the art of all people, regardless of background, social class, or academic training, and were particularly inspired by children's drawings. What were Haida totem poles? The Haida people lived along the Pacific coast in an area that stretched from California to Alaska. The Haida had rich traditions of weaving, carving, and sculpting and their totem poles which served as important representations of social status. 
are examples of monumental sculptures usually carved from cedar trees. A significant art form for at least 300 years. Totem poles depict images of animals or other natural object that serve as a spiritual emblem. Haida totems depict details of family lineage and social status. And were valuable enough to occasionally lead to warfare as clans disputed rightful ownership of totemic images. Haida totem poles could be placed either inside or outside, and could be as much as 60 feet tall. Outside, totem poles could be freestanding and painted, and were used to guide canoes to shore. Totem poles were also used as structural support inside houses, while shorter poles were used for burials. Who was Nada? Nada was the common nickname of French photographer Gaspard Félix Ternacon, 1820-1910, who was interested in photography for both its artistic value and its commercial potential. He was particularly enthused by photography's potential for realism. And he wanted to capture accurate details of the city of Paris. He even built a mobile darkroom in the basket of a hot air balloon. And could be seen soaring overhead, capturing aerial views of the city. The French lithographer, Honor Domier published a lithograph. Not our elevating photography to the height of art, 1862, depicting not our working in his balloon. His face pressed up against the lens of a camera while his top hat blows away in the wind. The lithograph emphasizes Nadar's high hopes for the role of photography in the fine arts. In addition to his photographs of the city, Nadar took many portraits of notable figures in French society. Including the poet Charles Baudelaire. The writer Alexander Dumas, and Sarah Bernhard, one of the most famous actresses of the day. How did the world change during the Baroque period? between the mid-16th century and the mid-18th century. Europe and the rest of the world went through significant changes. During this time, Europeans were engaged in the age of exploration they sent out fleets of ships into the world's oceans with various goals, including competition between one another for political domination economic expansion, and religious conversion of the people in the so-called New World. In Europe, the Thirty Years' War raged on from 1618 to 1648, forever shifting power on the continent, and weakening the Holy Roman Empire. Many significant scientific discoveries also took place during the Baroque period including Isaac Newton's discovery of gravity. Philosophy was impacted by Descartes' revolutionary statement. I think, therefore I am, making him the father of modern philosophy. Why was Florence an important Renaissance city?
the Renaissance is said to have begun in Florence in the 15th century. A period known as the Quattro Centro. At this time, Florence was not just a city, but a city-state, much like the city-states of ancient Greece. 15th century Florence was also a republic with a constitution. Though it was a far cry from a democracy. Florence was an economic powerhouse with a lot of civic pride. Money was pumped into civic projects such as cathedral building, architectural decoration, and artist competitions, all in an attempt to beautify the city and enjoy the pleasures of wealth. Florentine patrons supported the careers of important artists such as Masiccio, Donatello, and Guy Berti, whose innovative work kick-started the Renaissance. What is conceptual art? Conceptual art had existed in various forms for decades. But solidified into a major movement in the 1960s and 1970s. Inspired greatly by Dada and the art of Marcel Duchamp. Conceptual art is concerned with the intellectual process of art. The artist Sol Lewitt's 1967 article, Paragraphs on Conceptual Art, did much to explain the foundations of the movement, an idea alone can be a work of art. Conceptual art is extremely diverse and a large number of international artists are associated with it. Conceptual art can be anything from written documents to photographs, videos to performances. The work of Belgian artist Marcel Brutheers, 1924-1976, is a good example of conceptual art. Brutheers was a writer, filmmaker, and visual artist. Perhaps his most celebrated piece. Musée d'art moderne, Département de Eagles, Museum of Modern Art, Department of Eagles, 1968. Was an installation at his home in Brussels that described a completely fictitious museum. Besides the fact that Brutheers created posters, descriptions, and signs the museum did not exist. The central idea of this piece was to question the authority of the museum as an institution. Conceptual art continues to be a major part of contemporary art today. What is encaustic painting? Encaustic paints consist of pigment blended with hot wax, such as beeswax. Encaustic was invented in ancient Greece and popular in ancient Rome. Especially when painting sculpture, because encaustics provide rich colors and a fair amount of durability. Although encaustic techniques are difficult and labor-intensive, there has been a resurgence in the use of encaustics amongst some 20th century artists. The contemporary artist Jasper Johns is known for use his of encaustic. Was John Singer Sargent an Impressionist? Not exactly. John Singer Sargent, 
1856-1925, was a supporter of Impressionism and dabbled in the movement. But his interest in light did not extend all the way to completely dissolving any forms in his work, as was common with the Impressionists. Sargent was born in Florence to wealthy American parents, but spent the majority of his career painting portraits for members of high society in Britain and France. He was highly successful as a portraitist and tended towards realism. He was roundly criticized, during his lifetime and after, for making superficial art. In 1929, the art critic Roger Fry called Sargent undistinguished as an illustrator and non-existent as an artist, as quoted in Sargent, John. However, since the 1970s his reputation has been on the rise. Scholars now note Sargent's ability to emphasize psychological drama in works such as Daughters of Edward Darley Boyd. 1882, which recalls the sophistication of Velázquez's Las Meninas. His most famous portrait, Madame X, 1883-1884, caused a scandal for its twisted pose and sexuality. While at the time it was a disappointment, it is now acclaimed for its juxtaposition of the pale. Porcelain skin of Madame X, Madame Pierre Gautreau, with the soft, velvety texture of her skin tight black dress. In his later years working in Boston, Sargent painted mostly watercolors. Preferring to distance himself from portraiture. Though he was not really an impressionist, Sargent is now considered an innovative. 19th century artist who occasionally painted with an impressionist palette. What is the difference between the Baroque and the Renaissance? One of the main giveaways that you are looking at a Baroque painting rather than a work done in the Renaissance is the overall dramatic effect. Whereas paintings from the Renaissance are evenly lit, balanced, and symmetrical, Baroque paintings usually feature strong diagonals. Intense contrasts between dark and light tones, chiaroscuro, and ornate decoration. Swiss art critic Heinrich Wolf Flynn created a list of polarities or points of contrast between Renaissance and Baroque art in his influential text, Principles of Art History. These polarities can be applied to architecture, painting, and sculpture. The final two, indicated with an asterisk, are the most complex and are controversial amongst art critics and historians. When reading through these contrasting characteristics, think about Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper, c. 1495-1498, as a good example of a Renaissance painting, while Tintoretto's Last Supper, 1594, is more characteristic of the Baroque style. What is the difference between the Bridge and the Blue Riders? The Bridge and the Blue Riders were both groups of German Expressionist artists who shared artistic values. Promoted the symbolic power of color. 
and believed that art could communicate powerful positive or spiritual messages to the viewer. The bridge, known as German as Die Bruck, was founded in Dresden in 1905 by four architecture students. Fritz Blail, 1880-1966, Eric Heckel, 1883-1970. Ernst Ludwig Kirchner, 1880-1938, and Karl schmidt Radulov, 1884-1976. Their name came from the philosophical writing of Friedrich Nietzsche. And they shared the philosopher's idea that the present day can positively influence the future, acting as a bridge to the future. The artistic style of the bridge artists was inspired by so-called primitive non-Western art. Such as African masks, which they believed was somehow more authentic than Western art. They were also inspired by nature and Russian literature. Key works produced by members of the The Bridge include Schmidt Totloff's Three Nudes Dune Picture from Nidden, 1913, and Kirchner's Street, Berlin, 1913, which depicts two prostitutes, one wearing a purple coat, against a bright pink urban background. Der Blaue Reiter, the Blue Riders, was another expressionist group founded in Germany. In Munich rather than Dresden. Members included the Russian painter Vasily Kandinsky, 1866-1944. And German artist Franz Marc, 1880-1916, who was killed during World War I. Mark was interested in the symbolism of the color blue. And he believed that blue was the most spiritual color. One of Mark's most recognizable paintings is The Large Blue Horses, 1911. Which depicts the backs and bowed necks of a group of deeply blue horses as if they are distant mountains against a burnt, orange sky. Kandinsky was inspired by Russian folk art and was deeply interested in art history and philosophy. Kandinsky associated realism with the negative aspects of materialism. And as his career developed, his art became less and less figurative. He explained that he wanted his art to inspire spiritual awareness in his viewers. Kandinsky was also inspired by the 19th century artist Whistler to give his paintings musical titles such as Composition for 1911, Improvisation 28, 1912, and even Contrasting Sounds, 1924. His work is also thought to be inspired by his synesthesia. A neurological condition in which one can see numbers, letters, or even sound as color. Kandinsky's theories and paintings on the spiritual quality of visual art were extremely influential for modern art. Expressionist paintings from both the Bridge and the Blue Riders made a major impact on 20th century art due to their philosophical goals and interest in expressive abstraction. What are some of the important concepts of postmodernism? Understanding some of the key terms of postmodernism will help to get a grasp of what it is that postmodern artists do. Pluralism Postmodern art is not just varied, it is pluralistic. Meaning it reflects the perspectives of many different ethnic, racial, religious, gender, 
and sexual groups. Postmodern art is also pluralistic because it reflects many different artistic styles and often incorporates features of various art movements from the past and present. Appropriation Postmodern art often copies or borrows elements and images from other works of art to form something new. Consider contemporary television comedies such as The Simpsons and Family Guy. These shows frequently refer to, or parody, other television shows or elements of popular culture. Familiarity with these references is essential in order to get the joke. Deconstruction Postmodern deconstruction is a method of taking apart a unified whole to expose its underlying structure. It is used as a form of analysis or interpretation. It is popular amongst postmodern artists who are suspicious of the uniformity and overarching structure of modernism. In this way, postmodernism is like the child who continues to ask why. Kitsch many postmodern artists challenge the distinction between good and bad taste. The word kitsch traditionally refers to ugly objects that reflect bad taste. Such as souvenirs, or overly sentimental objects. Examples of kitsch include decorative garden gnomes. Or plates decorated with the images of the British royal family. Postmodern artists embrace kitsch and frequently incorporate kitsch into their work. What is Confucianism? Confucianism is considered to be both a philosophy and a religion, and is native to China. It is named for Confucius, a scholar born in 551 BCE, whose teachings form the foundation of the philosophy. Confucianism is concerned with the relationship between people in society including relationships with ancestors and even the emperor. The virtue of human-heartedness, called Ren, is key to being a Junzi, or gentleman. During the Han Dynasty, 206b.c.e-220 CE, Confucianism became the official religion of the state and had a major impact on Chinese art and culture. Who is Cindy Sherman? Cindy Sherman, 1954, is a postmodern photographer known for her conceptual manipulations of media images and her use of self portraiture. Sherman's photographs explore feminine identity and question. The way women are portrayed in art and popular culture. In her series untitled film stills, from the late 1970s and early 1980s. Sherman takes on the role of a female icon, a blonde bombshell such as Marilyn Monroe, and other stereotypical cliches. Her characters range from self-aware to subdued to comical. Her later work takes on art history. In Untitled No. 224, Sherman becomes Bacchus, the ancient god of wine as imagined in the work of Baroque artist Caravaggio. 
her eyes peering out from under a crown of grape leaves. Through her work, Cindy Sherman becomes the composite of the many images and film references she makes. Leading the viewer to question the reality or artificiality of not only the artist's identity, but of the way in which subjects are portrayed in art and popular culture. Who were some influential impressionists? The core group of Impressionist painters was a close-knit group living in France. Some were even related. For example, the artist Bert Morisot was married to Manet's brother. Though Manet is not officially considered an Impressionist, despite his major influence on them. The following list includes a selection of artists who are considered the major Impressionist innovators. Claude Monet, 1840 to 1926, Monet favored plein air, outdoor painting and is known for his landscapes, especially his water lily and haystack paintings. He painted the smoky interiors of train stations and the facade of Rouen Cathedral more than 30 times. The term impressionism comes from a description of his painting. Impression, Sunrise, 1873, by art critic Louis Leroy. Edgar Degas, 1834-1917, Degas was a painter, a printmaker, and a sculptor. And unlike other Impressionists, was not a fan of plein air painting. Instead, he preferred to explore the effects of artificial lighting and usually worked in his studio. He is particularly well known for his paintings of ballet dancers and his other famous works include El Absinthe. 1876, and a sculpture called Little Dancer of 14 Years. Now on display at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Bert Morisot, 1841-1895, Morisot's work focused on landscapes and domestic scenes that highlighted the female experience. She regularly showed her work at the salon and continued to paint professionally. Even after marriage to Eugene Manet, which was uncommon for the time. Morisot had a close professional relationship with her brother-in-law, Edouard Manet, and they clearly influenced one another. Some of her most recognizable works include The Cradle, 1872, and Summer's Day, 1879. Auguste Renoir, 1841 to 1919. Renoir was a close friend of Monet's and his work often features Dappled light and outdoor urban scenes, such as Moulin de la Galette, 1876 Which depicts colorfully dressed dancers at an outdoor dance hall in the Montmartre neighborhood of Paris His paintings are often cheerful and beautiful and provide a snapshot of upper-class life in 19th century France. Mary Cassatt, 1844-1926, Cassatt was born in Pennsylvania but spent her career in France. A friend of Degas, she also completed most of her work in the studio and she was a major supporter of Impressionism. Even encouraging American friends and family to buy Impressionist art. Like Morizot, Cassatt focused on domestic scenes and the relationship between mothers and their children. 
Her work continues to be highly popular, and some of her well-known paintings include The Boating Party. 1893-1894, T, 1880, and The Child's Bath, 1893. She was awarded the French Legion of Honor in 1904. Camille Pissarro 1830-1903, Pissarro was a highly innovative artist who preferred plein air painting and drew inspiration. From the countryside and rural peasantry, many of his paintings depict agricultural scenes. Pissarro applied thick globs of paint to his canvases, which didn't always win him favor with the critics. But greatly influenced the following generation of post impressionists. Notable works include Avenue de l'Opera, Paris, 1898, and his many paintings of the village of Pontoise. 